confidentiality in the workplace can be ethically the right thing to do, but in some instances, it can also be the law. And the law is there to protect the rights of, well, everyone involved. Disclaimer, I am not a lawyer and this video is informational only, so if you need legal advice, please get it from a legal professional. There are typically three kinds of information that might need to be kept confidential in a workplace. These are the personal information and circumstances of customers, clients, or patients, employee information that companies collect, such as employee records, criminal records check, sick time, wages, etc., and proprietary information related to that company or, or organization, like how they get that caramel inside that one particular chocolate bar or the secret spice recipe of the famous fried chicken, etc., etc. All of these are examples of information that requires confidentiality in the workplace, but today I want to focus on the first one, the personal information and or circumstances of customers, clients, patients. I'm Jen Swanson, by the way, your career coach, and on this channel I help you to get the job, love your work, love yourself, and advance your career. And I have worked in four major career areas over my life that required high levels of confidentiality. The hospital system, the post-secondary or college system, the church, and also as a coach. And all four of these areas require a very high level of confidentiality because all four of them deal with people and their personal and private and often sensitive information. I remember when I first trained to work in the healthcare system, there were signs in the hospital elevators that said, please maintain patient confidentiality. And our instructor pointed at the sign while we all stood around listening and said, you talk about a patient anywhere except on the unit and with the doctors or nurses involved and you will be fired. And that is true today. So this stuff is serious. In the college, students would often tell me things about their lives, about their studies, about their circumstances, and they knew that it was being kept in confidence. I, as an instructor, was not allowed to share grades or progress with anyone, even parents, and believe me, some of them tried without the express permission of the student, because of course all my students at the college level are adults. In the church, as a pastor, I am always hearing private and personal stories of things that are going on with people in their lives, and unless I have permission to share any of it, all of it remains confidential. The same goes in my coaching business. What a client tells a coach stays confidential. However, with all of these roles and in most professional relationships, there are three standard exceptions to this confidentiality rule. If the person intends to hurt themselves, if the person is being hurt by someone else, for example, in situations of domestic abuse or elder abuse, where the person is in danger, or where the person intends to hurt someone else. In any of these cases, it is the duty of the professional to tell the appropriate authorities to help prevent anyone from getting hurt or worse, dead. It's very, very serious. What can happen if you break confidentiality? Well, if you break confidentiality not for the reasons mentioned just before, then you could be disciplined or fired or sued or a combination of all three, none of which would be pretty. You could also lose trust. The trust of the person who shared the information with you in the first place and or the trust of your management and your colleagues. And here is the thing about trust. It takes far, far longer to rebuild broken trust than it does to earn it in the first place, which means that trust is a very precious thing and it needs to be carefully cared for in any relationship, workplace or otherwise. How to be sure you are keeping confidence. So how to take care that you are maintaining confidence in the workplace? Well, some things are very simple. Don't leave files lying around where others might have access to them or accidentally come across them. Lock sensitive files up. Put a password on your computer. Be sure that sensitive material and session notes are kept where they can't be accessed except by those authorized to. Resist sharing stories or details about your client, customer, or patient, or congregants with anyone who isn't supposed to hear them. 
be sure if you are taking work home with you or that you work from home that you have security measures in place and if you work in a hospital never ever ever take patient information home with you be careful about sharing names or identifying details if you are using examples of situations in other situations so for example i used to bring real life examples of medical diagnoses and pathologies into my classroom for practice with medical terminology for my students but i never mentioned where the examples came from or anything about the patient and i made sure that any identifiable information was removed before using the examples in that setting if you are teaching or training a new person in your workplace for example you might share a situation that happened as a training example but it, again be sure to change any identifiable information before you use that example for training purposes and because i'm in the reminder business let me remind you that awareness is the first step in creating a new habit so now that you are aware or reminded of some of the important aspects of workplace confidentiality you will be more conscious of it you're welcome <laughs> and this topic was a viewer request so if you have something you'd like me to do on video leave a comment below in the chat box and i will do my very best to address it give this video a like subscribe if you haven't already we have just begun the year 2022 and if you would like to know how to be more laser focused especially heading into a brand new year check out this next video happy new year and we'll talk to you soon